Hello YouTube, welcome back to another video. Today we have a, the brand new plugin from Keeve Audio, uh, the tape face that is available through Plugin Alliance. Uh, or you'll, you know, if you're on the subscription like I am, you can, it's it's included within the uh, the Mega XXL pass. And uh, yeah, so we're going to be doing the, how we usually go about these plugins. It's less of a review, more of a, you know, a listen, comparison with other plugins, you know, popular tape uh, emulators on the market. And then we're going to also run it through some plugin doctor stuff just for just for a bit of bit of fun. And for those of you who are interested, uh, let's take a look at the manual that I have up right here. And you can see there is, and uh, you know, props to Keeve Audio for really providing these uh, really cool looking manuals. I think they're very, they're actually really informative. Is there any way I can zoom out here? I feel like it's very zoomed in. Cool, that's fine. Cool, so Tapeface is an analog emulation of a classic Irish tape machine with a few added features to give you versatility in every mix. It's perfect for adding analog warmth. Uh, and character to your master or subgroup buses. Use our custom bias algorithm to add unique low mids and saturation to drums and bass. Or throw it down on every track to emulate recording through a physical tape recorder using our very CPU friendly oversampling. Sounds great. Off the get go. Um, is it CPU friendly? So let's max it out here. I'd say it is, you know, win number one. <laughs> uh, I think, yeah, so the oversampling that Keeve Audio provides is really, really good. Even on the Extressor, uh, the oversampling's quite CPU efficient compared to other plugins that I've that I've tried. Um, but yeah, this is the interface. As always, I think Keeve do a really good job with their interfaces. They, they It looks classic. You know, you know what it is uh, straight off the get-go. It has a, an analog feel to it. Um, for those of you that prefer it, I do. I know some some people are more edged towards the digital. You know, if it's a plugin and it's digi digital, I want it to have digital. You know, uh, a digital look to it, uh, kind of like how FabFilter run. You know, do their plugins. But uh, no, I like the analog ones as well. Uh, but it does have really cool um, digital features that we like to see, such as oversampling, uh, stereo width control, and. Um, presets and, and and whatnot so that's that's awesome so let's start by going over a little bit of the interface and you know all the 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 buttons and switches and what they do or at least what uh keeve and plugin alliance indicate in the manual uh so you have start from the left and we'll move over to the right so you've got your tape type which switches of course the tape mode uh, the red and white one, they say it's um, perfect for like getting that uh, really pumpy tape sound while with like minimal, I guess, saturation and distortion. Uh, it's good for mix bus uh, with heavy with heavy transients that need taming. Uh, then the blue one is my personal favorite, and uh, you know, wave uh, waves. God, so, so much news on waves recently. I've just, just my brain's just been uh, overtaken by that a topic um, by Keith. Sorry. It's their favorite as well, and it is mine. Uh, it's kind of like a perfectly calibrated tape machine. Uh, it's got really nice high end, and it, it has the classic low end bump of a tape, uh, as well as uh, imparting a nice tape compression as well when you uh, drive it uh, using the input knob here uh, and you can switch between the input meter the gain reduction it'll show the gain reduction at what what the tape compression is doing and as well as the output meter as well which is really cool you got your on and off switch as well there uh, and again it's perfect for any mix bus and then finally the third tape type which is the gray mode it's uh it's kind of like a lo-fi uh it's really dark and gritty and uh it, it adds a bit of um heavy gain reduction and harmonics especially when you when you push it um but yeah so we'll, obviously we'll we'll take a listen to these and see how they um see how they sound then you've got your input and output i guess you know driving more input reducing it and it's really cool because you can link them and i've tried it. it it the 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 linking works really well it's not the case of like the extressor plugin that i 
that I uh, when I reviewed it, when I linked it, the input and the output, when I drive the input, the output wasn't linear. It would dip the output quite heavily. So then I'd have to increase it back up to gain match it. So this is quite accurately gain matched. And if you want to reset, you just double click. And I really like that in plugins. Yeah, I, I like instead of having to like go up, scroll up and find where zero is, you know, I like just if I'm here, I want to double click and just restart or you can unlink them and just do it manually. I usually manually um, gain match anyway. I don't necessarily trust automatic gain matching. I feel like sometimes it adds a little bit of a, a little bit of a boost of gain to make it sound a little, you know, which make tricks into it, it tricks you into thinking it sounds better, uh, but it doesn't necessarily. Then you also have your IPS settings as well. So obviously we went through these. This is all you just do it on and off uh, as the lights turn up uh, on and off on the interface here as well to indicate so you know whether it's on and off. Uh, I mentioned the gain reduction the meters, the input meter and the output meter. So it's just the mode, sorry. And then you've got your IPS class, you know, just your standard 7.5, 15 and 30. Your saturation knob, which is a, a new feature, it's basically sa saturation, and uh, we'll 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 try that. We'll you know we'll boost this up. We'll take it to the max and see what it does, as well as see what it does on the plugin doctor side by using the harmonic analysis. Um, and it apparently, according to Keith, it reacts differently depending on the tape mode that you select. So we'll have to take a close listen for that as well. And then you've got the bias knob and uh, it's essentially when you turn it to three, I think it kind of engages a different algorithm, a different saturation. Uh, it's got a bit more low mids, it's warmer and it's a bit grittier as well. So it, it depends on what you're using it on. I, I probably wouldn't use it on the mix bus, but I'd, if I, you know, if I'm, I had like a piano that sounded too clean and I wanted to dirty it up a little bit, I'd push it there. And then you've got your stereo width control that will I guess uh, push the uh, enhanced stereo width uh, by emulating uh, non-linear qualities found in actual tape machines uh, because the left and right paths they're controlled separately. Or you can use it to decrease the stereo field uh, and turn the sig turn the signal to mono if you want as well. And uh, I, I'm, I am reading these off the manual, so I'm as accurate and correct as as possible uh, with this um, with this kind of initial explaining the um what 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 the plugins and what the individual knobs do so i'm not kind of just guessing um but it, it, it is fairly similar to what you usually see anyway i mean your inputs your input your outputs your output your saturations your saturation we know what it does and uh yeah the low, oh, skip the low boost here. Essentially, it activates kind of like a, a little bit of a low chef, uh, chef, a low shelf to uh, make up for some of that low, low energy that um, that gets a little bit lost when when using the saturation. So you can use that to kind of compensate for it. And then you've got your noise knob, which adds um, I, I, like the 50 hertz hum that's found in a vintage gear. I don't really like using this personally, but uh, it's there if you if you want it. And at the top here, you've got your mix knob, which is really cool. You can really drive it and then push down the mix to get a, a kind of like a parallel flavor going on. You've got undo and redo. You got your AB, which is awesome. I like to see that. Your oversampling, which is great. Again, uh, not a lot of tape machines, uh, tape emulators, plugins feature this uh, oversampling feature, which is awesome. And then you've got a bunch of factory presets for each tape type, which is really cool. Um, so you know if you want to, so you so you know what flavor you're getting, because instead of just having without being filtered by tape type, you could just be clicking on random ones and it'd be like, oh, well, I don't I, I want more of the tape too. But how do I know which one's the tape too? And then you have to waste time and flick through them. That way, you know, straight away, right, I want the blue tape sound, which is more a little bit more pristine, uh, less gritty as the gray. but. And then I'll know if if there's a preset that I want to tap into that has more of a lo-fi edge, you can just select the gray mode, which is awesome. I love that. Um, all in all, I think they've done a fantastic job with the uh, interface and the, the look of the plugin. The graphical UI, everything's great and the features that they included in it. Um, yeah, I think, I think I didn't miss anything. 
Uh, we went through all. Yeah, so let's just do now a little bit of a comparison with... Well, first of all, let's take a listen to the plugin itself. I'll I'll mess around with some stuff. We've got a track here. It's kind of like a, a lo-fi. Let me turn off the plugin here. Kind of like a, an old school hip hop vibe. A um, little bit of R&B influences on there. Got a little bit of lo-fi edge. So let's see how the lo-fi, if, if we can exaggerate that a little bit more. And then we'll compare it with other plugins on the market. We've got the virtual uh, tape machine by Slate Digital. I've kind of calibrated them to kind of hit around zero db on the uh, view meter here we've got the j37 by waves again it's a very popular one uh, again i've calibrated to hit kind of zero db and we've got the uad ampex which is one of my favorites we'll take a listen to this see how it sounds I i'll try and use a similar tape type i don't think i can't do it on this one but I tried to use a similar tape type basically uh so it's not very very different because i know tape different tapes have uh different you know sounding qualities and you know whether it's a half half an inch an inch or quarter inch or whatever but again it's not apples to apples we are just just taking a listen for the fun of it and then also what i want to really include in here as well which i didn't put and i don't know why is the uad studio tape recorder this again is a very very popular one that i use on mixers every now and again when i want some tape flavor uh gp9 15 ips cool so we've got all of them off now uh let's bring up the key and start taking a listen in the next segment Okay, this is the second time I've recorded this now because I realized the first time the OBS wasn't picking up the audio from Ableton and I recorded the entire video. Uh, I did the, the shootout, the plugin doctor, the, you know, going through, listening to the actual uh, tape pace itself and then to later on realize that no audio was being picked up from the door. Uh, so I'm redoing it. <laughs> uh, cool. Let's just go straight into it.
cool. So we took a listen and it sounds really, really good. Um, I actually used it in a recent mix that I did. Uh, and I, I think it's one of my new favorites, actually. It's got so much versatility, you know, from three different tape types you can pick from, uh, three different flavors, the linking on the input and output, the saturation control, if I want a bit more saturation, the, the low, the low boost, the biased stereo width control. Um, I don't really use a noise, but it's there if you want it, it you know, it, it's, it's really, really good oversampling as well, mix control. It's really, really, really versatile and uh, incredibly designed, and sounds great as well. Uh, which is why I think moving forward I'll be I'll be using this one. Uh, yeah, well done, Keith. I, I, I really enjoyed it. Uh, let me know down in the comments, guys, what you thought, uh, what you think it's uh, how, how you think it sounds, uh, whether you use it in your mixers and your experience with the plugin. Tell me your favorite feature, or tell me what you dislike about it. Uh, okay, let's move on to the next portion where we're going to shoot it out against other competitors. So other competitors, uh, plugins such as Slate Digital, we've got UAD, we've got Waves as well. We've got two UAD, the Waves J37 and this um, the Slate Digital Virtual Tape Machine. I guess these are the most popular ones on the market. Um, again, you can let me know down in the comments below if there's something else that I, you know, that I'm perhaps missing. And what I'll do is I will shoot the Keeve out against the competitor rather than go through them individually. I'll go Keeve and then Virtual Tape Machine and then Keeve with a J37 and then Keeve with the UAD Ampex. Um, so before I get into that, let me just show you who what we have. So of course you saw the Slate Digital Tape plugin. We've got the J37 by Waves. Again, a very popular one. We've got the Ampex ATR102. This is one of my, this used to be one of my favorites. Uh, use this in countless mixers. I really like how it sounds. It's more of an, an obvious tape effect, less subtle. I think the Slate Digital is a little bit more subtle uh, and the UAD, the Studio that we've got here as the, the final plugin that we're going to shoot out the Keeve against. Uh, these are a lot more subtle, but this one's a lot, this and the Keeve itself actually is a lot uh, more obvious as a tape effect. I think the J37, the Slate Digital plugin and the Studio, they're a bit more of a subtle effect, unless you drive them, obviously. Uh, but they're a lot less noticeable on, on, on the mix bus, uh, I find anyway. So yeah, let's begin with our shootout. I'll bring them up side by side. And for those of you who aren't familiar with Ableton, I know I kind of skipped past this part. You activate plugins and bypass them here at the bottom. So whenever the orange light's on, it means that the, that plugin's been activated. Um, you'll see the VUs start moving as well, but just to make it super obvious for those of you that aren't familiar with how Ableton works, which is really annoying. I don't like this kind of, this is the only like downside side that I don't like. I wish there was like a bypass up here. You can use a plugin itself, but uh, it's, it's closer for me to just switch down here at the bottom than go here and then here and then here. I just, I just found it a bit of a quicker workflow. But yeah, let's just uh, get straight into the audio and shoot them out. I think uh, all of them I've kind of aimed to hit about zero dB uh, in, in the input, so uh, so the sound so I can get as similar as, as possible and not make one sound a lot more obvious than the other. So just keep it as neutral as we can. Let's let's get straight into it.
cool. So, yeah, it it you know it it competes really well. Uh, I think co- consistently, it's just one of my favorites. I mean, the only one that I put you know very close to it for me, you know, it's this plugin's very close to my heart <laughs> is the Ampex ATR. Because uh, again, I, it may be a case of because I've used it quite a lot, you know, personally. And I'm familiar with the sound, kind of like with the Distressor video. I, you know, I enjoy the the UAD one, uh, maybe because, again, I'm just used to hearing it. Uh, it's, these <laughs> Nothing's being played and these view meters are going crazy. Um, yeah, cool. So let's just get straight into the plugin doctor analysis now. I'll load it up and we can just take a, take a look what, what it what it does. Uh, I'll play some music in the background so you guys don't have to sit there in silence and we can take a look at what it does in the back end. So we've loaded Plugin Doctor up, uh, and this is just a default preset. The only thing I've done is uh, put the oversampling on, and just so you see what it does on the Plugin Doctor view. Here you go, and then harmonic analysis. Right, so this is what it does. So this is off. And when you turn it on, you can see there's a roll off starting about 50 hertz and a roll off on the high end starting at around 6, 6K and then rolls all the way down to 20, 21. Cool. Um, let's just play some music and mess around with the settings, I guess, and you can just take a look for yourself.
Okay, uh, thank you for watching guys, those of you that made it to the end of the video. Um, something that I forgot to mention actually at the beginning is that the GUI is also resizable and it doesn't lose its, it doesn't lose its integrity, so it doesn't get all pixelated, which is very, very nice. Something I forgot to mention, uh, but uh, I know it's important for, for a lot of you and, and myself included, so I'm surprised I skipped past that. Uh, but yeah, so yeah, leave a comment down below. Tell me what you thought of this uh, shootout. Let me know what your favorite was. If you like the, the Key Audio tape face and what you don't like about it. I always love to hear your guys' uh, opinions and inputs. And again, if there's anything that you want to see a plugin shootout, if there's anything that you would like for me to include in my videos, uh, any specific analysis, then please, again, do let me know down in the comments below. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video to see more videos like this in the future. I kind of post on a weekly basis and yeah, thanks for watching guys and I hope you have a great day.